Welcome to Visions of Victory, our weekly broadcast of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Springhouse, Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining us where we remember the words of the Psalmist David. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So sit back and relax because the next voice you'll hear is that of our pastor, Charles W. Kwan. Bible, Psalm number 78, verses 38 and 39. The New Living Translation reads in this manner. Yet he was merciful and forgave their sins and did not destroy them all. Many times he held back his anger and did not unleash his fury. We remembered that they were merely mortal, gone like a breath of wind that never returns. I want to share with you this morning from the subject, just a breath. As you take your seat, will you simply say, just a breath. The New King James Version reads in this manner. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Yes, many a time he turned his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For well, he remembered they were but flesh, a breath passes away and does not come again. And so Josh with the boys writes these words. God let so many of our iniquities slide. <laughs> because he knows the frailty of our human condition, should we not show the same grace to others? Remember, even our enemies, the ones who mistreat us most, are just a breath that passes away and does not come again. That's all. In the grand scheme of things, that's what life is really about just a breath. Yeah, yeah. Then he offers this prayer. Dear God, give me a portion of your grace to extend to those who disappoint me, for they, like me, are just a breath. Yeah. Amen. It's amazing because when we would do good, evil is always present. The things that we said that we would not do, we find ourselves doing. And none of us can ever get to the point in our lives that we think that we're so holy. Because all of us deserve God's wrath. But thank God for his mercy. Do I have a witness? Thank God for his mercy. And let me press the point that all of our sins were not in our old life. <laughs> Make no mistake about it. Since we came to Christ, we have messed up. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you don't have to go back too far to see your sins. Yeah. I don't mean 10 years ago. Yeah. I don't mean 10 months ago. Yeah. I don't even mean 10 days ago. Yeah. Sins of omission and commission. Yeah. Our thoughts have not always been holy. Yeah. Attitudes have not always been pleasing to God. 
God knows us better than we know ourselves. I wish I had a witness this morning. That's why every time you get a chance, you ought to thank God. You ought to give God praise. And we have become so consumed by praising God in material things. But you ought to just thank God this morning that he has spared your life and given you grace that we don't deserve. And even as we talk about our enemies, know that you are enemy to someone yourself. You'll get that by 11 o'clock. Some of us have made enemies. And some of us are enemies to others. Don't think you're so good and holy. Who have you offended? Who have you hurt? Who have you cussed out lately? It's amazing how self-righteous we can be. I feel like preaching this morning. Because we're always good at looking at somebody else's faults, but never can see our own. That's why you ought to be able to fall in love with your spouse over and over again, because if your spouse loves you, they've seen you at your worst. Oh, come on, somebody talk to me. They've seen you at your worst. And to make matters even more difficult, your children have seen you at your worst. You can't always hide from them and close the door. The Bible says a friend loves at all times. Friends love us not because we're so perfect, <laughs> but because they see in us the potential of being better. Yeah. Do you realize, my brothers and sisters, that many of us are just a breath away from being incarcerated? <laughs> Do you realize that many of us are just a breath away of being addicted? All of us are capable of falling. Oh, God, I wish I, I wish I could make this plain because sometimes we become so consumed with ourselves, we can never see God. It's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord. None of us have arrived. We could fall to any given day. I mentioned this week to Brenda Benson that uh, I took my car to the dealer. I don't see the salesperson here now, so maybe I'm safe. <laughs> He's a member of the church. And I had to take this car back two or three times in the last couple of weeks. And I went there, and I'm trying to press my point, but I also recognized, Reverend, can we help you? Yes, yes. I got it. He stopped me. I said on my breath, thank you, Jesus. Because I was about to go somewhere. Because I'm human. I was just a breath away. He interrupted me and said, can I help you, Reverend? 
How are you doing today, sir? <laughs> Change! Just like that. Anybody ever been a breath away? Anybody ever been a breath away? I've learned something over the last few years, and that is that I got to keep my game going. Because folk can take you out of your game quick. Always be on guard. Psalmist is declaring the goodness of God. He's calling on the people of God to praise God and to acknowledge God's goodness. Oh, how sad it is that we forget how we got saved. Not by works, lest any of us should boast. Doesn't matter how long you've been in the church, how well you can sing, how well you can preach, how well you can pray, or how good your offering is. Only grace, only grace, only grace, only grace. Psalmist is declaring God's history. God has a history, you know. <laughs> He's been doing this longer than we can even remember. Saving folk who were lost in sin. You're just one of the many. Psalmist yeah. acts as a historian. He reminds people of the goodness of God, how God rebuilt the temple, how the Lord always comes through in times of need. Many of us can testify how God turned our lives around. Anybody here this morning able to say that the Lord changed me, fixed me, sealed me, blessed me, anointed me. I'm not what I used to be, but I'm not where I want to be. This is a work in progress. That's why when you see folk in the church mess up, don't get upset. Because you mess up. Theirs may be more visible than yours, but you're still messing up. I don't want to join church because the hypocrites are here. Well, you here. We got folk in in the infancy stages. We got some folk who should be someplace, but they're still not where they need to be. But we need each other. Satan tries to deceive us, have us to believe that this is Holy Ghost headquarters and everybody here is saved. We got some saved folk, we got some lost folk here too. Turn to somebody and say, I hope you're not lost. Some folk get lost in the house. God was merciful and forgave their sins and did not destroy them. Don't you know, my brothers and sisters, if you look back over your life, there were times when you should have been out of here. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You were on your way to hell, and God snatched you and would not let you go but so far. You were destroying yourself. There are no lifelong Christians. All were born in sin. If you didn't fall for something, you'd fall for everything. And maybe your mistakes are not like mine, but we all have mistakes. Oh, God. Psalmist says, don't be so angry with your enemy. Don't 
Don't allow yourself to be poisoned by what others do to you and you can't see God working in you. Sometimes we act worse than the enemy. That's about another one you'll get at 11 o'clock. Because we try to do tit for tat. When was the last time you forgave somebody and loved them unconditionally? And I said this over and over again, stop using that excuse, I can forgive but I can't forget. That's another way of saying you don't want to forget. God has forgiven us. Where would you be if God had not forgiven you? <sighs> That's why I was so intrigued by this scripture. But it's full of compassion. Forgave their iniquity and did not destroy them. Yes, many times. He turned his anger away. When I read that, I could not help but think of my grandmother, who I've used on more than one occasion, that when I did something that was displeasing to her, she would say, get out of my sight. Because she loved me that much, and she did not want to impose punishment on me because she knew I deserved it. Sometimes God just turns his face because he knows if he looks at us, he will look at us in disgust. Oh, God. But he loves us so much that he will just turn just a little bit so his anger will not consume us. Master, it don't take all that to praise God. When I think about what God saved me from, when I realize what a mess I have been, and you know, sometimes, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, I, I am like everybody else, and I listened to Linda Brown's children speak yesterday about, her, about their mother, and just a few Weeks ago, I listened to my sons and daughters talk about me, and they made such wonderful gestures and wonderful oratorial remarks, but in my heart, I knew that I didn't deserve all of those accolades because I have sometimes missed the mark. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? And we all like to hear praises. You know what the Lord put in my spirit? And I really ask you this morning to do this. Everyone in here should have someone who holds them accountable. A mentor, a coach, someone that you can be honest with and they can be honest with you so they're not always telling you the things that make you feel good and pump you up. But somebody that trusts you and loves you enough to bring you out of your mess. Every pastor needs a mentor. Every deacon need somebody that holds them accountable. Every believer needs somebody that will walk with you and pray with you and help you reach another level in your life. You need to have somebody that you can trust that will tell you when you're going in the wrong direction and do it in love. Because you can't grow by yourself, nor can you grow by hearing all flowery words. That's your assignment today. And your spouse might not be that person because after a while, she may not be your spouse or he may not be your spouse.
because we don't want to hear stuff. I feel like preaching. We don't want to hear it. Let me also say, my brothers and sisters, that all of us have trash in our homes. And sometimes what we do, we throw the trash out and then we go back and bring it back in again. And all of us have trash in our lives. And we go back and pick up the trash again. Instead of giving it to God and let it go. And some of us have so much trash in our lives that we don't even know it's there. And look how many times God forgives us of all the trashy stuff in our lives. And trash is not always sin that is sexual. So don't rest your laurels on the fact that you are faithful. Because you may not be in sexual situations because you can't have it. I'm preaching this morning. Greed, envy, jealousy, hard-heartedness, lust. You folks are quiet on me. This is R. Our children are downstairs. Quiet! Some of us got so much trash that it's been so built up in us, we can't even get rid of it. And what happens is we keep on picking it back up when God's forgiven us for it. Why do we keep on going back and doing the same thing over and over again? Let it go. Get rid of the trash in your life. God's forgiven you. Do you realize how many people slip out of the will of God, go back into the world? You folk are quiet this morning. I'm telling the truth. We talk about the lost, but we also talk about those in the house who keep on going back to the doing the same thing over and over and over again. I just can't help it. You know you shouldn't drink, and you keep on drinking. Oh, why is it so quiet in here this morning? It's only 20 after 10. <laughs> you know you can't handle one drink. Why do you keep on drinking? <laughs> Have no business smoking. You're about to die. You keep on smoking. What's wrong with you? <laughs> if you keep me here long enough, I'm going to come down your street where you are. You got credit cards that keep on escalating. You keep on going back. Lord, if I get out of this debt and he got you out, you right back right again. <laughs> Lord, if I ever get out of this relationship, I'm going to be a better person. My God, he done got you out. You saved, sanctified for the whole ghost. You're still doing the same stuff in the new relationship. All of us have trash in our lives. But we thank God Almighty. He looks beyond our faults and sees our needs. Do I have a witness? 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 Someone said to me once, Pastor, I appreciate your honesty. I don't want anybody to feel just because I'm pastor that I got it all going together. I need grace like you do. I need mercy like you do. We all need it.
Do you know, when we had a marriage service probably about 15 years ago, Pastor Campbell said after their marriage all those years, there were many times he could have taken an exit. But by the grace of God, they decided to stick it out. That's also true with many of our marriages. Oh, come on, anybody here this morning know what I'm talking about? Where God came and intervened. We can't help anybody by telling them that we're all holy and we're all right. You got to help somebody by telling them, by the grace of God, I know what you're talking about because I have been there. I have fallen. I have messed up. But I'm able to tell you if God can fix me, he can fix you. Anybody here know it's no secret to what God can do? He can save anybody. Anybody he can save. Never give up on anybody. And I said this before. There's a screen there. Which one of us could have our lives on that screen? Come on up here and let me see what you look like. And that's why I appreciate the fact that God has chosen me to be a pastor in spite of my imperfection. Because I don't deserve it. But God sees something in me that just a breath away, he's given me the opportunity to move in a better direction. Anybody here this morning know that God's given you the opportunity to be what you are, to be better than you are? Anybody here this morning able to say, I thank God for looking at me with favor. Favor. What a blessing it is for God to use you in spite of you. So when we pray, we don't pray like saints because that's not what we are. But we pray as sinners saved by grace. Oh, God. I'm astonished, baffled how God could continue to use me in spite of me. I just told you how I went to the car dealer, but I haven't told you about some other stuff. We hope you've been inspired and encouraged by today's message. You're invited to visit us at Bethlehem Baptist, a warm multicultural church with two Sunday services, 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. We're located in Springhouse, Pennsylvania, at Penland Pike and Dager Road, only 15 minutes from Philadelphia. We hope to see you soon. God bless you, and remember, love God, serve people.